Hi folks, in this particular tutorial, we are going to learn dependency injection. This time we are going to take a practical approach and directly we are going to build an API with fast API and understand this concept. It could be a little bit intimidating, but please pay careful attention to it and you would be able to understand everything. So first of all, we need to import fast API and depends from fast API. Now we need to create an instance of fast API. Let's give it a title. This title would be reflected in the open API documentation. Dependency injection. Now we can create an endpoint or a route with this app instance. So at the rate app dot get which API endpoint it should hit. It should hit blog slash ID. OK, let me first give you some context about what we are trying to build. We are basically trying to build a dependency injection system which injects the correct block title or the correct username into our routes. Once we build it, you would be able to understand it much better. So let's start with it. So get blogs, blog underscore name, which is going to be an string. It depends on a function called get blog or 404. Finally, we are going to return the blog name. Now we are in a position to understand it. So basically, this is a dependency which would take the responsibility of finding the correct blog title, the correct blog name given an ID. So whatever ID that will be coming in the path parameter, we will fetch that ID in this dependency called get blog or 404. And this dependency will return the blog name. That's all it does. Let us implement this. So def get blog or 404. Of course, it definitely requires an ID. This ID is going to be of type string. Let's say we are finding to search in the blocks dictionary. So blog equals blogs dot get ID. And simply we need to return the blog instance, the blog name. What if the blog name does not exist? Let's say someone types in an ID of five or an ID of six. So in that case, the blog name will not exist. To handle this corner case, we are going to import HTTP exception and status. So basically, we are going to notify that a blog with this ID does not exist. So if not blog, raise HTTP exception with a detail. This is going to be the message blog with ID ID does not exist. Let's make it an F string. Finally, we are going to specify status code. Status code is going to be status dot HTTP 404. That's it. That's all we needed to build an API with fast API. Before we move forward, I notice a mistake. The name of this function should be get blog because we are going to fetch one single blog at a time. Also, there needs to be a slash front slash here. Now this is complete. We can give it a try. Before that, I would like to discuss more about this dependency injection. Basically, first API takes care of evaluating this dependency by passing the ID to this dependency function and injecting the returned value of the dependency back to blog name. So we cannot pass the ID here. It's the responsibility of fast API to pass the ID or any of the necessary requirements for the dependency. Now let us give it a try. I have my virtual environment activated. I would need to install fast API. I would also need to install UV icon. UV icon is basically the server that will serve fast API app. Once these two are installed, we can simply say UV icon, the name of the file without the dot by extension, the name of the fast API instance and hyphen hyphen reload so that every time we make a change in this file, the server will be automatically reloaded. Now we can visit the documentation URL to test it out. This is the URL for the documentation that we will need to visit. And now we can try it out. If I pass an ID of three, 
it retrieves the block with id3 wow this is such a graceful pattern however functions are often created to be reused so what i am thinking is i am thinking to create i am thinking to make this function more generic so that instead of fetching just the blocks it is able to fetch the blog items or the user items if required so let's say i am going to rename it to get object of 404 we would require to pass in the model or the dictionary that we want to fetch data from now instead of doing blocks.get we could do model.get and finally we return the right message that object with this id does not exist this implementation is definitely much more cooler because we would be able to reuse it for blogs users any kind of data that we, we would need to fetch from our model so i'm thinking to pass in the model which is let's say the users and id but we cannot do this we have already seen that fast api takes up this responsibility so i cannot call it like this this is a perfect opportunity for me to showcase the parameterized dependency injection for the parameterized dependency injection we would need to create a class let's call it get object or 404 there is going to be an init we are going to pass on the self dot model equals model we would be able to call this class because every single class in python has this tandem method called underscore underscore call so it's a callable and all dependency injection needs is a callable let me pass self and the id that we need to search for id is going to be a string finally what we can do is object it is going to be self dot model dot get id if not object we are going to do the same thing that we did earlier the beauty of this implementation is we would be able to set the model which is basically the dictionary or the name of the table by instantiating an object of get object of 404 and then we will be able to use that into the dependency injection method let me showcase an example to you let's say we want to search a blog and also a user the endpoint is going to be slash user username now we would need to set the dependencies correctly let me create a blog dependency this will be an instance of get object of 404 and we are going to initialize it with the blocks object which is basically the dictionary the dictionary block and instead of using the get blocks of 404 we can say get object or 404 however in this implementation the dependency injection system would not know where to search so rather we would need to instantiate it with block dependency block dependency will initiate this object and the callable that is the underscore underscore call method will be called when fast api will try to pass this dependency similarly we can create a user dependency again get object of 404 we are going to set the model which is basically the dictionary here that is the users dictionary or the users table and the dependency is going to be user dependency so instantiation will be done here that will set the model and fast api will call the underscore underscore called under method so once the model is set we would be able to search in the right dictionary or the right table let us give it a try let's first search for some user let me search for the user with id of 8 we get the right user if i search for some user with id of 1 object with id 1 does not exist and let's give it a try for the blog yes we are able to search correctly using the dependency injection system this might look little bit intimidating but i definitely recommend you writing it down on your own 
and then you will have a better understanding of what's going on. So far we have seen function based dependencies and parameterized dependencies with classes. However, if you pay careful attention, you would be able to realize that we can definitely do the very same thing by using functions. So I can just call the name of the depend the function name of the dependency, pass in the required arguments and I would get the returned value back. So what's so special about dependency injection? One very powerful thing about dependency injection is that we can override the dependencies during the test time. Let me show you an example. For demonstration purpose, I am not using a production grade database like Postgres or even a SQLite database. Let us consider that we have this database called development db. In this database, we do all the development stuffs. All our users, blogs, everything is stored in this particular database, development db. Now what will happen if we do testing on the exact same database? Very soon, the database will be cluttered by our unit tests. So we want to avoid this thing and this is what I'm going to demonstrate. Let me first create an instance of fast API. Now it's time to create a route. So app dot, let's say post. The route is going to be items. We need to create a function handler for it. So def add item. The item is going to be a string that we are going to add to the database to the list and db is going to be depends on get db session so the get db session dependency would return the list and in the list we are going to append the item that's all we are going to do so db dot append item and now let me print it out let me print out the database which is the list itself and finally we are going to return a message the message would be something as simple as added item the name of the item and that's it now we can test it out let me start a server let's get the documentation let me add an item named pickle the item is added if we see the terminal, we would see that pickle has been successfully added. This is awesome. Now let's create a unit test for it. I have already written the code and we are going to review it. I have imported all the required dependencies. Then I have created a database, which is basically a testing database. Right now this is useless because this is not getting used. We are creating a test client. And finally, I have written a test unit test, which hits this slash items API with the query parameter called sugar item equals sugar and we assert that we get the required response this is good however one problem that we have right now is that by default whenever the api would be hit slash items api would be hit by default our database which is the development database would be used so very soon when developers will be continuously testing it so very soon the database will be completely cluttered and this database would be full of results from the unit test in order to avoid it what we can do we can override the dependency all it matters is we need to override this dependency and we need to provide a different database instead of our development db so i have uncommented this line this will make sure that we are using a different database which is testing database which is basically a list and now all i need to specify is app dot dependency overrides the name of the dependency that I want to override and we can specify the new value for it let's give it a try before that we need to install some of the requirements like pytest we would also need to install httpx now we can say pytest hyphen s hyphen s basically means in more verbose mode so just also print the print statements oops i am not using the correct method so i have to use client dot post ideally in the post we should use request body and not the query parameters however just for demonstrating i am using demonstration i am using this query parameter with post let's again give it a try see we had this print statement remember 
which prints the database which is currently being used. And this time, we are not using the development database. Rather, it's our overrided database which we have developed for testing purpose. So our new overrided database is being used. And that's because we have overrided the dependency. This is a very important concept. It helps us create graceful unit tests.